Now, what is this? This is where we live. The red dots are the places that most of us call home. We live more and more in cities, and most of dead cities are located along the coast. On this map, you see giant cities such as Tokyo, New York, London, Shanghai, Mumbai, all located along the coast. And every single day, 150,000 people move to a city. Now, what does that mean? That means that the same number as is present in this room, a thousand, will have moved to a city by the end of my talk. And not only by the end of my talk, and 10 minutes later, and 10 minutes later, and 10 minutes later. So think about that today, every time a new talk starts. We're going to add everything up until the end of this century. What do we get? 4.5 billion people that will have been added to the urban world's population. A process we have never seen before in the history of the planet or the history of mankind. In these cities, we see a rising population and a rising consumption. And only because of that, 40 years from now, twice as much food will be required from farmland than is produced today. And this farmland is increasingly converted into urban areas. And this is not the only problem that we need to solve. At the same time, we're facing sea level rise, so land is lost. We're facing soil depletion, so land is lost. Fossil fuels are running out, so we need land to produce biofuels, so land is lost. So all these problems, all these developments, they can be summarized in one single thing. Land scarcity, land shortage. Only 40 years from now, the total land shortage will be a stunning 22 million square kilometers. Well, that said nothing to you, I suppose. But just to give you an idea, that is the same as the total land area of North America. Or two times China, if you like. And that is space that we don't have, but that we urgently need to live, to produce food. Now, why do we keep thinking that we are going to solve this problem by just inventing a couple of energy-saving gadgets, by banning light bulbs, by driving 10% more efficiently? That is not enough. Big problems require big solutions. And the big problem that we need to solve is where are we going to find that 22 million square kilometers? Where are we going to find it? Can we go to the desert? Well, no. Well, there is the space, but we do not have the water resources to make the desert productive. So that is not going to work. Can we go into space? Well, obviously, there is enough space there. And uh, technology is progressing rapidly. But it's way too expensive to create 22 million square kilometers of living area there. So a much better option before going to the moon or going to Mars, we all would like to do that, but a much better option is to have a very good look at our own planet. Now, what do we see? Water covers around 70% of our planet. And here we can find the space we need. Now, the good news is the water is close to where we already live, the cities on the coast. Cities on the coast can expand on the water to create space. Now, we can build houses on the water to live, but we can also capture the waste nutrients and the CO2 of the land-based cities and use them in floating cities to produce food and energy through floating LJ farms and floating fish farms. And by doing this, the floating cities do not only provide the space to live, but also the energy and the food that the urban population, the world population needs. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is the idea of a blue revolution. The next logical step in the development of humanity to start living on the water in a sustainable way. 
Uh, you might think that this idea is quite creative. You might even think it's, it's very innovative. But you might also think, well, this cannot be realized. This is too innovative. We cannot do it. But what if I told you that all the building blocks that we need, all the technologies, to create a floating city are available? Now, ever since I found that out eight years ago, when I was uh, studying here at Delft University for my PhD, ever since that moment, I've spent quite a bit of my time, some people here in the room might say, all your time, on research and design of uh, floating cities. And it's a life's project. Uh, I feel like my journey has only just uh, begun. But from the research that I did on floating cities, I can share some, some things that I've learned I would like to share with you. Um, I learned that we have the knowledge and the technology to create floating houses. We know how to make floating infrastructure. We even know how to protect a floating city from waves, by floating wave breakers, by wetlands or other technologies. So the technologies, all the building blocks are there. And the only thing that we need to do is just put them together, integrate them and apply them. Well, in fact, that is already happening. Here you see the floating pavilion in Rotterdam. It's used as an exhibition center and a conference center. And it's Rotterdam's first step to create a city on the water. And here you can see how we made such a building. This is the first day of the construction. You see me and my colleague Karina with a big supply of polystyrene blocks that are here being glued together by construction workers. First day of the construction, November 2009. Later you see how the space between that polystyrene blocks can be filled with concrete and steel domes are placed on top of that. And in the end, the building, the steel domes, they are closed with inflatable cushions. And this is the final result. Now, this building was made, it was designed and built in only one year. So that is how fast we all can move to the water. It was also built on one location and then transported to its current destination. And in the future, it can be easily relocated to any other place. Now, think about how this will change your life. Say that you are living in Rotterdam in a floating house and you would like to move to another place. You don't have to sell your house. You just move with your house to another city. That's fun, isn't it? Well, say that you want, you're very happy with the place where you live, but you would like to have a larger house. Well, in that case, you just sell your house online and put an, an, a new house, a bigger house, on your plot of water. Now, that means you will become the owner of your own plot of water. And you think probably there's not a city in the world that's going to sell you a plot of water. Well, actually, it is already happening. Also, this is already happening. And you don't believe me. Well, come and have a look. And here we are in Delft, the Netherlands, where it's possible to become the owner of a plot of water. Five families have already done this, and they are now building their own floating house. In the future, this will be common everywhere in the world. And also, you will be able to live in a floating city. So now you see, floating cities are needed, they are possible, and they are happening. So I'd like to invite all of you to join the Blue Revolution. I'm looking forward to meet you on the water. Thank you.